I spent 10 years as a professional triathlete, and after coaching hundreds of runners, I've noticed five common mistakes that makes them run slower, get injured, and stops their progress. Fix these, and I'll guarantee you'll start to actually see yourself run faster for longer. In ancient Greece, there was a guy named Milo of Croton. Milo became a legend by carrying a baby calf on his shoulders every single day. As the calf grew heavier, so did Milo's strength, until one day he could carry a fully grown bull. The simple idea is that by gradually increasing the challenge, Milo's body had to adapt to become stronger. In modern science, this idea is known as progressive overload, and it has time and time again been proven to be the number one predictor of faster running. You see, we often hit a plateau because we just do the same thing every single week. But if you take the principle of progressive overload and just add a bit more speed or one more interval or a bit more distance each and every week, then your body will respond by making you run faster. The key to long-term improvement is training like Milo carried the calf. Start small, but keep progressing over time. But that brings us to the second mistake that most runners make, and it's so bad that it's actually the number one predictor of injuries. When I started training seriously, I found a training program online and I just started to follow it. I quickly went from training twice per week to training five times per week. I thought that was how I was going to get better. And I coach so many people who come to me with a lot of motivation and they want to do the same. They go from training nothing to training three, four or five times per week because they set a goal and now they're motivated to just get after it. But if you do that, what happened to me will also happen to you. You will get injured. Not because you're running five times per week. In fact, at my peak, I was running around eight times per week, but because you are hitting the gas without shifting gears. You see, research has shown that increasing your volume will significantly increase your chance of injuries. And perhaps the most common mistake I see runners make is trying to increase their volume too fast. So let me tell you this, 10% per week might not seem like much at first, but it compounds. Look at your training program and then see where it ends up in week 12, 14, 16 or week 20, not on week one. And then ask yourself, can you do that? Have patience and before long you'll be running 100 kilometers per week or more, but you need to stay within that 10% increase each and every week. Trust me, your future self will thank you for it, especially if you avoid the next mistake that runners make. And it's so powerful that avoiding this mistake will make you run faster and get less injuries. In 2022, a group of researchers wanted to figure out what kind of strength training protocol would help runners the most. You see, it has long been known that strength training is great for runners, but they wanted to know what strength training protocol was the best. They found that even though any type of strength training would help you improve, if you combine two or more, then it would be the best. So combining submaximal training, maximal training, and plyometrics. The mistake that most runners make is just ignoring strength training altogether because they don't think they need it or they're afraid that they're going to gain weight so they'll become slower. Don't be that person. Find some way to get at least one strength training session in per week and try to incorporate some injury proofing exercises, some maximal strength exercises and some power and plyometrics. Not only will it make you less likely to get injured, it will also make you run faster. But not doing strength training is not nearly as bad as doing mistake number four, because that mistake will literally make you slower with the same amount of training. Think of building your fitness like building a house. You start with a strong foundation and then you add layers with each and every layer having a specific purpose. Research has consistently shown that building your fitness like a house with what's called a periodization framework will make you faster in less time compared to just doing progressive overload. Periodization is a way to plan your training so that you can get the biggest house peak at the right time and avoid injuries and burnout. So that begs the question, 
How do we periodize our training most effectively? The simplest way to do it that many elite athletes use is a linear periodization with the following four phases. The base phase, where the goal is to improve your aerobic base and endurance. This phase is low intensity, allowing you to build a foundation before adding intensity in the next phases. It's typically six to 12 weeks, and example workouts could be easy runs, long runs, and high rep strength training. The next phase is the build phase. Phase. Here, we focus on building strength, speed, and stamina. During this phase, you gradually increase the intensity with workouts like tempo runs, intervals, and hill sprints. Strength training is also introduced to improve muscle power and prevent injuries. This phase typically lasts for around four to eight weeks. Next comes the peak phase, where the focus is to reduce your volume and sharpen your overall fitness. This is when you taper your mileage, but you keep the intensity to make sure you peak at the right time. It typically lasts for around two to three weeks, leading into your main race, making sure that you're well rested and ready to perform. Finally, the recovery phase allows your body to regenerate and your head to just take a break. After the race, you'll just do light activities for one to three weeks to make sure that your mind and body are ready for the next training cycle. But even runners who have a perfect periodization protocol and have been training for months leading into a race, they end up having horrible performances because they fall into the trap of common mistake number five. In 2013, leading into my first official 10K race, I had been training perfectly in the lead up. I was 100% sure that I was going to make a huge personal best and one hour before the race, I was stoked. You see, I was studying sports science at the time and two days before the race, I had a lecture about caffeine and performance. So one hour before the race, I took 200 milligrams of caffeine and I expected to fly. And I did. I flew straight to the bathroom. You see, the mistake I did, and I see so many people do on race day, is to try something new. Race days are for mastering the things you've already done in training. You need to try out everything before race day. If they use a specific type of energy brand during the race, then you have to train with that energy brand. And it goes for everything. Nutrition, shoes, mental strategies, hydration, supplementation. You need to try these things in training to make sure you know exactly how your body reacts. And then you need to avoid the number one thing that makes most runners quit. And I'll teach you exactly how in this video right here.